A very good morning. Welcome, everybody. And a very, very special welcome because we have the Kwai and Simmons family who are joining us for baptisms in each of their families, respectively. So we welcome the families and Harper and Eva and all those who've come to share in that uh, ceremony which makes these young people members of Christ's family. And of course, because it's still Christmas vacations really until school starts, we welcome anybody who's visiting with us from out of town. Our theme this morning is good news, and we'll be interested to hear how Jonathan puts a spin on that during sermon time. But it's just a reflection that at this time of the year, it's always an unexpected unknown of how the new year is going to go, how new schools, new, new experiences are going to go. And I just hope that we can always look for the positive, look for the good news, and remember that through our journey, Christ is with us. We'll take a moment to consider Christ's presence with us before we start worship. And then we'll sing our first song. Please. Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we will rejoice by singing our first song, Glorified. sentence for this morning. Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim, to proclaim release for the captives. Let's join together in the collect for purity. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I now invite you to sit, and we will join in some confession. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ and in faith, and are themselves forgiving. In silence, we call to mind our sins. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace. Let us join together in praying the collect for this morning. God of justice and compassion, you anointed Jesus to be in good news to the last, the lost and the least. Send your spirit upon us that we too may proclaim and live your new life through Jesus Christ, our liberator. Amen. Let's give Jonathan a moment to slip behind the console over there. <laughs> Would you stand and join together in thou whose almighty word.
Because of the baptism, there'll be no first reading this morning, so Helen is going to read our gospel to us. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Praise and glory to God. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the word. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I remember the very first sermon I ever gave. It was uh, just a bit over 10 years ago. I was very nervous and didn't really know what I was doing, so nothing's changed there. Um, and, but it was, it was well enough received, I think, uh, and when it was over, Monty, our, our vicar at Onslow Anglicans, he stood up and he said the kindest thing. He said, I always suspected you might have a gift for preaching, but now I know. So clearly, I'm doing it wrong. Because when Jesus first preached, they wanted to toss him over a cliff at the end of it. Uh, Peter gets to preach on this part of the story at his last service uh, next week. I wonder what he could possibly find to say about that. Uh, and to be fair, Jesus was a lot more provocative than I was trying to be. But my goodness, he starts with a hiss and a roar, channeling the words of a 500-year dead prophet. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's how he got their attention. And then the punchline. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Boom. Except he doesn't stop. And he goes on deliberately, it seems, to rile up the local crowd. As I said, you can hear about that next week. But imagine being able to say that. Here now, in this place, these words have come true. Let's just talk for a bit about where these mighty words have come from. They came, as, as you heard, from the book of the prophet Isaiah. But it's also pretty clear that Isaiah himself didn't write them. The reason for this is that the book was written over a period of some centuries. The first half, which tells us quite a lot about the man himself, locates itself very clearly in the reigns of kings Uzziah 
Ahaz and Hezekiah. This is around 700 years before Christ. It's a long time ago. And the next bit was written during the exile in Babylon after the destruction of Jerusalem. This is over a century later. So clearly not the same guy. And the final section from which Jesus is quoting today dates from a generation later again after the people of Judah had returned home. And yet, despite having been written over such a long period and under such different circumstances, there are some remarkable similarities of theme throughout the whole book, patterns of imagery and prophetic aspiration. It's fair to say that the prophets are a pretty bad tempered a lot of the time. Um, but it's worth noticing what particularly gets their goat. You may be surprised to notice that they're not obsessed with sexual sin. That seems to be a specifically Christian obsession. I don't know why. But there were two things that really annoyed them. One was idolatry, and the other was social inequality and exploitation. The increasing unaffordability of housing, with families sleeping in garages and cars, the growing gap between the haves and the have-nots, exploitative employment practices, whether legal or not, these are the things that would have brought Isaiah out in a rash. More than any other, perhaps, the prophecies of Isaiah alternate between harsh, despairing judgments and almost delirious hope. And it is these extravagant hopes that give the book so much of its significance. But what's in the book itself, which is Iron Age geopolitics, basically, is perhaps less important than what it came to mean after it was written. In the 500 years or so between the words of the prophets and the time of Christ, these ambiguous and extravagant hopes began to coalesce into a quite specific image of a savior, a messiah, someone who could lift Israel out of political humiliation and spiritual decay. This book in particular came to embody some of the deepest hopes of the Jewish people. And then Jesus shows up in Nazareth and says, I'm here. It's me. And as we know, his life consciously reflected this image in many respects. He was a charismatic teacher and a healer, a descendant of King David with a deep understanding of the law. But in other respects, he challenged the accepted image of the Messiah. He was no great warrior, nor a king, nor did he regard faith or righteousness in the sight of God as the exclusive property of the Jews. And he didn't get on with the powers that be. He confused people, and we know what happened next. But I'd like to just unpack the idea of what it is to be a Messiah. That's the Hebrew word. The Greek word is Christos, or Christ. By the time we get to Jesus, everyone is talking about the Messiah. Capital T, capital M, TM, trademark, except no substitutes. The one who is to come. A single individual around which all of our hopes have gathered. But originally, in the Old Testament, the word Messiah had a less specific, exclusive meaning. It simply meant one who was anointed, appointed, say, or chosen, set apart for a particular purpose. So this word is used of kings, of priests and prophets, of the altar and the temple, sacred vessels in the temple, unleavened bread, and even a non-Jewish king. This was Cyrus who had made the return to Jerusalem possible. Anyone in principle might be a messiah in this sense. 
And this is important because there are two ways of responding to the life and action of Jesus. One is to say, Jesus did it all. All the saving that needed to be done, all the liberating, all the healing, all the restoration, all the redemption has already been done by Jesus. And once we've accepted this, all we need to do is sit on our hands until eternity dawns. Or is it possible that the fact that Jesus was a liberator and a revealer and a healer, might that empower us to do the same? The Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to bring good news to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What would it take for us to be able to say, today this scripture is being fulfilled in your hearing? Today we have a baptism, and I'm sorry to say this is what your child is being baptized into. It's a big job, and it sounds terribly, terribly grand. But I don't think it has to be, mean, it does have to mean great big gestures. Um, and I want to give you a few tiny examples of what I mean. At Onslow Anglicans, where I came from when we were there, there was a roster of people who each week, would head to the local primary school so that they would be read to by the students who were involved in the school's reading recovery program. It sounds very modest and unassuming, but if that's not liberating people from the chains of illiteracy, I don't know what is. Also, given that two thirds of all prisoners are functionally illiterate, this is literally setting the prisoners free before they're even imprisoned, so that's surely better. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. In a few minutes' time, we'll take up the offering and with it the basket for the food bank. And as one who's made use of it in the past, I can confirm that this resource is indeed good news for the poor. To proclaim recovery of sight to the blind, it is so hard to see and understand the world and the people around us. And yet there are people who help us to do this all the time. Teachers and scientists and journalists and counselors and most of all, the people who love us. Love is anything but blind and people can only truly see themselves when they are truly loved. To let the oppressed go free. What is it that oppresses the people around us? Loneliness, isolation, self-consciousness, economic hardship. Whenever we act to help lift the burdens of those we encounter, we're carrying out the work of Jesus, the work of Isaiah. There's a poem you possibly know and may even have sung a version of by Howard Thurman, who was a black American theologian, which it's worth remembering around this time of year. It's called The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us all to be enlivening, liberating, healing, nurturing agents in the world. May this scripture be fulfilled 
in our lives. Thank you, Jonathan. So we come now to the time for the baptism, and I invite the baptism families to come forward, and uh, depending on how much space, probably to be on this side would be good. How many people? So the parents and the godparents, and anyone else who should be there too. Thank you. Great. Okay, and now I, uh, I wonder, Matilda, whether you would do something to help me. Because you can't do, have a baptism without water. So Matilda, if you could reach up to there, I'll help push, yeah, thanks, Michael, that'll be good. I'll just put that in there. There we go. That's really important. Thank you. There was a bit of water there, but that's just so that you see that we're doing the real thing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Matilda. Edifano Atikaraiti, dear friends in Christ, God is love. God gives us life. We love because God first loves us. In baptism, God declares that love. In Christ, God calls us to respond. And so, um, so Robin and Amanda are going to present Harper. Okay. But Cooper's coming too. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the presentation for baptism. That's good. So well. Just so that we can all hear you. Thank you. We're going to say yeah. I, present I present Harper, Harper Sue, Pamela, Pamela Kwai to be baptised and made a member of the body of Christ, the church. Thank you very much. And then we'll pass that to Michael and Sarah Jane. I present Eve Ann Simmons to be baptised and made a member of the body of Christ the Church. Thank you. I just turned it off again. From the beginning, the Church has received believers by baptism. Believers' children have also been baptised so that with help and encouragement, they should grow up in Christ and by the grace of God serve Christ all the days of their life. On the day when the apostles first preached the gospel of Christ's resurrection, Peter urged his hearers, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus the Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God may call. So I'll ask the parents and godparents, how then do you respond to this promise? We hear God's call and ask for baptism. Do you renounce all evil influences and powers that rebel against God? I renounce all evil. Do you trust in Christ's victory which brings forgiveness, freedom and life? In faith I turn to Christ, my way, my truth and my life. Will you love care for this child? 
So, will you love Harper and Eva and share your faith in Christ with them? I will. Thank you. And now I'll invite Sarah Jane to say a few words that she'd like to say. <laughs> there you go. That's right. That's... Um, we are getting Eva baptised as we would like to formally recognise the church community and God being a part of Eva's life. We also have a special connection to St. James Church and Peter, which spans back a lot through our family history. Mm, thank you. Thanks, Sarah Jane. Let's go back to Helen. Praise the Lord who made heaven and earth, whose promise endures forever. We thank you, God, for your love in all creation, especially for your gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all life. We thank you for your covenant with your people Israel. Through the Red Sea waters, you led them to freedom in the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Through the deep waters of death, Jesus fulfilled his baptism. He died to set us free and was raised to be exalted Lord of all. It is Christ who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. We thank you that through the waters of baptism you cleanse us, renew us by your Spirit and raise us to new life. In the new covenant, we are made members of your church and share in your eternal kingdom. Through your Holy Spirit, fulfill once more your promises in this water of rebirth set apart in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now let us wait on God for a moment in silence and then we'll sing, Come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, welcome. man Arpa Suba Pamela Kwai I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we sign you with the cross the sign of Christ Harper, walk in the faith of Christ, crucified and risen. Shine with the light of Christ. So together we all say, Amen. Amen. Harper, God, God receives you by baptism into the church. Child, Child of God, blessed in the spirit, welcome, welcome to the family, family of Christ. Oh, 
Ah, you've got my microphone. <laughs> <That's dangerous. laughs> okay, I'll just mute myself, and it's probably not best in the mouth. There we go. Oh, just gone. Okay, thank you very much. That's useful. Uh, uh, that'll just disappear for a moment. Okay. Okay. Eva Ann Simmons, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well done. We sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Walk in the faith of Christ, crucified and risen. Shine with the light of Christ. So we say together, Amen. Amen. by baptism into the church. Child of God, blessed in the Spirit, welcome to the family of Christ. So just before uh, we go to the affirmations, I'd just like to present to you the world's newest Christians, both beautiful. So let's just give them a Would you please stand? Thank you. So Praise to God who has given us life. Blessed be God for the gift of love. Praise to God who forgives our sin. Blessed be God who sets us free. Praise to God who kindles our faith. Blessed be God our strength, our hope. Let us, the baptized, then affirm our faith as we say, I believe and trust in God, God the Father, Father maker, maker and sustainer of all things, and in God the Son, my Saviour, Jesus Christ, and in God the Holy Spirit, giver of life and truth. This, this is my, my faith. faith. Blessed be God, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. So I'd just like to pray some prayers for Harper, Eva and their families. Loving God, we thank you so much for the gift of these children, gift to their families, a gift to their wider communities and a gift to the world. We pray as Jonathan has preached that they might really share the good news of your coming, your liberation, your love. And we pray that they, your Holy Spirit would be at work in them throughout their lives and that they truly would be members of your family. We pray for parents and godparents we ask you, God, that you would give them wisdom and the guidance of your Holy Spirit to direct and support um, the children, Harper and Eva, that you would uh, enable them to uh, be full of love and encouragement to these children. And we pray, too, that you would bless their uh, participation in your church, that you would... Um, Make the church for them a place where they feel they belong and where they feel supported and welcomed and loved. So bless them, bless their families and godparents, bless their wider circle of friends, and may they grow to love and serve you in the fullness and power of your Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So now there are a couple of presentations to be made. Oh, that's great.
thank you. And um, and that's for Harper's parents and godparents. And that's for Eva. Thank you. And um, so now we come to the piece. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with you. This is a time when we exchange a greeting of peace. There is a little thing called the pandemic going on, but so you can work out how you greet one another. But uh, this is a time when we can greet and congratulate one another. So blessings to you. Please return to your places. I'll send it to you. So welcome everybody who's on our Zoom live stream. As you can see from the screen, we've got quite a reasonable collection of parishioners who join us this way every week. So everybody, wave to, the, to everybody and say hi, so that they just feel part of our service. And now we'll join together in our offertory hymn, which I believe is Be Thou My Vision, Jonathan.
O oh God, and for the own weak. The Lord be with you. Lord, yes. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give it is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son and made your home among us. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us, and your light might reach to the ends of the earth. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. Take, eat, he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Father, we do this to remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make, make us, us one, one in Christ, Christ our, our risen Lord. Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Would you please sit or kneel? And as our Saviour Christ taught his disciples, so we pray together singing. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. Just want to explain how we do communion in this sort of uh, orange uh, light uh, setting. Um, everybody who wishes to is invited to share in communion, but we will only share the bread the wine uh, will just be drunk by me because that Im 
involves both body and blood of Christ. And um, and we, if you don't, if you do want a blessing, but you don't want to receive the bread, you can just come forward and keep your hands down in front of you. Um, finally, there is both uh, gluten-free wafers and uh, and normal wafers. So um, so you're welcome to come and ask for a gluten-free wafer if that's what you need. Thank you. Draw near and receive the body of our Saviour Jesus Christ in remembrance that he died and lives for us. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Till there is no war or hate, till no one dies needlessly, till there is enough for all, till there is no rich or poor, till we see all children safe, till all tears are wiped away, till all people set free till we all have dignity till we see this kingdom come through our lives your will be done till we see this kingdom come let us be let us be
Holy God, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other through Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. May you be blessed to be a blessing. A blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and rest and remain upon you now and always. Amen. We have uh, family time, so um, there is one notice um, or two notices in our news link, both about next Sunday. Next Sunday we don't have an 8 o'clock or a 10 o'clock or a 9 o'clock service. We have one single service in the parish at 9.30 here at St James's. We hope that Omicron will uh, keep its distance until then and that we'll be able to gather in numbers. And that's a farewell service for Helen and for me. Um, one, and then after that service there's um, uh, lunch and so there's a sign-up sheet uh, halfway down the church on the left. Uh, so that's for helping with all sorts of arrangements for the day and also I think for bringing food. But you're invited to bring uh, food and, you know, and to share um, if you are coming to that event. Uh, also that at that service there will be a um, retiring collection for the people of Tonga and you can bring a, um, an envelope marked Tonga Appeal or you can put it in the retiring collection but we hope that we can get some good support for people who are going to need assistance for many, many months because of what has, uh, what has happened there. So hopefully um, we can give generously to that. Are there any other notices that I really ought to give? Well, I'd just like to say that uh, in the family time, it's lovely to welcome to the family Harper and Eva, and, um, and thank you too who have come to witness that for being part of this service today. Let's conclude our service with the final song, uh, which is Here I Am Lord, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Please stand.
think about our week ahead, and we particularly think this week for Peter and for Helen, as they are with us for their last week. They've already done the big move out of the vicarage to their new retirement place in Silverstream. So we understand that there's probably a little bit of chaos and boxes to actually sort out, but we are thinking of you, and we look forward to being able to farewell you formally next week. So go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.